So this video here, courtesy of Politics Explorer, again, we're going to move on from the COVID talk because it gets a bit boring, but I just want to make a quick point. This video here, courtesy of Politics for All, features a lady called Christina Pagal. She's a professor from the Independent Sage Group, right? That's a government body or the independent scientific body or something along those lines that's basically been advising the government on their response to COVID and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> so they've basically been you know, helping out and providing some scientific basis behind or scientific information or advice as to where the government should point the direction or what they should do in terms of reopening things up, locking things down, blah, 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 blah. blah. And it shouldn't be surprising to, to see that a lot of these people within this scientific body are very um, cautious about reopening stuff and they just don't, in their heads, because they're scientists and they're not you know government officials and they don't have to sort of communicate with i guess or they don't have to care about the greater good in terms of like business and economy and all that stuff they're just looking at it purely from a scientific point of view they can't really understand at all why the government is pushing forward with reopening when no one's been when not everyone's been vaccinated just yet and we're already kind of you know close to getting there so why not just wait a few more months and then we can reopen quickly or reopen everything together and for me personally, when I see stuff like this, I think it's a mental illness, right? And I kind of tweeted it as like a kind of a joke, right? Tongue in cheek that like these people are mentally ill who want to kind of have us continue living under some sort of draconian lockdown, you know, until everybody vaccinated, which seems to me to be completely unrealistic because you have to hope everybody is up for getting vaccinated. Not everyone is. People have their own reasons for doing so, whether it's, you know, queuing on stuff or stuff they read online it doesn't matter but everyone's got their choice as to whether or not they want to get vaccinated or not just for everybody to get vaccinated to reopen it just seems a bit harebrained this there somehow has to come a point where <clears throat> personal responsibility does come into play and blah 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 and i put this out i tweeted it and of course for some reason some people obviously didn't really respond too well to it one person being the secret dj who i kind of enjoy his um his tweets usually for the most part yeah but i feel like much like the they much like um the election of Donald Trump caused some people to just freak out and just, you know, I don't know, something happened to them. They, I guess it was Trump derangement syndrome, whatever it was, they were just so agitated and annoyed that Trump was president. And again, you know, I don't blame these guys because he didn't really seem like the, the most um, presidential of presidents that's ever existed in the history of time. But it seems like with COVID in the UK, it's just, it feels like it's made some people just go completely balmy, in it? Like balmy to the point where they just can't accept or even um they can't accept or yeah they can't accept the idea or they can't accept the fact that there's people around them who support what they do who might have a different opinion as to how we should go about reopening stuff or you know different view as to what the scientists are saying again this isn't kind of somebody that's super intelligent i'm not the smartest guy in the world or anything i'm not a scientist of course but when i see some of these people saying this sort of stuff i think to myself you know we've been locked indoors for the best part of what two years is coming up well, not get two years. I think it's maybe like 18 months under that. But I guess in terms of like university academic years, it's like two years. But regardless, it's more than tw it's more than it's more than 15 months. We've been under some sort of lockdown. Everyone's been pulling their hair out. People have kind of broken up, gotten together, had babies. So much has changed throughout that period of time. But we are all by and large gagging for a return to normality because we've all kind of realized as much as it's been a, a, you know good to have the ability to pause and take a break and take a foot off the pedal and reflect on things we kind of liked how our life was before and we want to return to it to some you know to some degree and to have these scientists come out and tell us oh no you can't return to your normal life until we have everyone vaccinated it's not safe it's not safe it's not safe you just get to a point where you think to yourself hold on all these other countries are opening or reopening in, in increments they've decided to take the risk they decided the the what is it what's that thing that boris always says the um something is worse than whatever but whatever they decide to take a calculated risk and reopen things up because you can't keep people hold up forever right lockdowns are not very effective in the long term overall but they may be a good temporary fix for a temporary solution but in the long term there's going to come a point where we're going to have to return to normal and cases and deaths will still be at a number that won't be satisfactory to the greater number of people because no one wants to see anyone die regardless if it's natural causes or whatever you don't see anybody pass away so when someone does pass away from a virus that didn't exist a couple of years ago that was kind of from from what we know so far maybe has escaped from a lab it's distressing it's sad to see and you don't obviously want that but again like for the greater good right in terms of like helping making sure the most people have the most level of kind of life satisfaction there just has to be 
an avenue or an option or a roadmap that leads us to getting back to opening up sooner rather than later. And this clip here from the BBC of this lady's talking from Sage basically saying that we can't reopen until everyone's vaccinated just kind of sent me for a loop. And of course, I retweeted it, it said um, most scient these scientists are flipping mentally ill. And of course, you know, secretly just saw that, got a bit irate and then decided to block me on it which is odd again i never understood the whole blocking thing um maybe because i'm i've been i've lived on the internet my entire life for the most part i've been on message boards i've been on forums where people said the most insane stuff so nothing really kind of can trigger me online i've, I've seen it all right i've been on just about every part of the internet that exists on out there but even parts of the dark web and stuff nothing really can kind of shock me in that respect so and I'm mostly of the school of if I don't like something, I just turn away in it or I just kind of go somewhere else. I don't kind of shout at the rafters for you to stop doing what you're doing. If other people are enjoying it, I just kind of go somewhere else. And again, because, you know, there's so many of us on the Internet, um, especially fans of what people do, you would imagine that some you'd imagine that some people who do great stuff like, you know, Secret Agent obviously got those two great books that I've read that I thought were really good. He would just imagine, I don't know, maybe he doesn't think it through, but surely secret dj knows that there's some of his fans because you know i would imagine he's probably more on the left leaning side but i'd imagine he has to understand that there are definitely some of his fans i like his books that like some of his insights into dance music and dj culture that are probably raging tories right he probably has to realize that right and if that's the case what does he block them all because he doesn't share the same political belief as them if they if they say we want to reopen things up and we don't care about vaccines and all this sort of stuff like would he block those two guys too i don't know i should i just don't understand that i think it's super super odd um it's even stranger when it's like grown adults so i mean like this guy is like what in his 50s or something and he's going around blocking people because they don't agree on how he views you know um, reopening stuff and again you're a dj do you know what I mean? you're not a scientist you're not anything you're just like us and suddenly you've become the spokesperson for how things should be reopened in terms of um, in hospitality and dance culture stuff i don't know it just seemed a bit strange i just found it very very odd and bizarre but hey you know everyone's free to do what they want to do but this is the video in question that made my man so irate and my reply got him so pissed off but hey what can you do but this, is, this is the review or this is the video itself of the lady speaking about the need for everybody to be vaccinated before we reopen which to me sounds completely crazy but hey here we go. And there's no doubt the vaccination has put us in a much, much better place than we were before. But infections still matter. They matter because um, about 10 to 20 percent of people end up with long COVID, which can be quite debilitating. They matter because every infection is a new chance um, for a new variant to arise. And they matter because we still don't know what the really long term impacts of this disease is. So if you were advising the government, what, what should the government do in terms of timing? I mean, we're about three quarters of the way through our vaccination program. I'd like to finish it before we go all the way to opening, which is exactly what Israel did. And even now, Israel is seeing that Delta means that they haven't actually managed to keep control of it. It was fine with the previous variant. They so again, me, because maybe I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but how does that make sense? You want us to follow what Israel does or Israel did and try and vaccinate as many people as possible, the, the, the majority of the population, and then reopen stuff. But then Israel has proved even when you do that, it still doesn't guarantee that other variants might come in and disrupt or change the complete landscape of your response to the virus in the first place. So what it feels like is that there's no real white, there's no real white, there's no real right way to go about things. You're just going to have to make a decision, make a, you know, decide on a date to reopen and just hope and just pray to God that the numbers and the deaths are not really astronomical. That's basically what it feels like. You can chart as many graphs and make as many models as you want but for the most part there's no especially now with the variants that's what's kind of messed things up for the most part there is no real guarantee that when you reopen that we're going to be in a far better place than we were prior to that it just feels like that but again what do i know I had which was alpha which is used to be the kent variant and now they're they're um starting to vaccinate their children um that's an option for us it helps more people who are immune the better um we really need to invest in ventilation we know that it's airborne and that's how it spreads Ventilation is a public good. That's no restrictions, right? It's just made. The, the the kid thing I don't understand I don't know why you want to vaccinate your children when we've been told throughout the entire from the beginning of this is what makes me interested about this whole thing how it's changed from the beginning we were told that you know kids don't necessarily are less susceptible to getting it but then we were told kids can carry it and pass it on the idea that you don't want to give it to your grandma and have your grandma pass away right you who would want to have a kid have that on their conscious that would be awful and then 
So then that's why schools were closed and kids were able to go to classes because they didn't want kids to kind of be around and be spreading it from person to person, blah, 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 blah. But now we're in a position now suddenly now we want kids to be vaccinated to protect everybody else, but then we want everyone else to get vaccinated. It's just like, huh? And then the ventilation thing, mate, we don't even have air conditioning on buses and trains. What makes you think that suddenly now companies that have been our business for the best part of 15 months plus are going to have the money and the ability to put together or put install a ventilation system in their buildings but some buildings don't even have the possibility of even making that work right you have to kind of you know from the architect i'd imagine architecturally to have adequate ventilation you have to think about that before the building's even built right it goes into everything it goes into the cladding on the walls or cladding on the outside of the structure to the windows you choose to the seals that you put on the windows to the flooring that gets installed everything has to kind of it all works as a common idea of like it's, it's i'd imagine the same sort of thing like having a, a um a building that's got like a low carbon footprint or whatever or, or doesn't really you know put out any emissions i don't know but i would imagine to have a building that is well ventilated you have to decide those things before even a brick is laid on this foundations so to somehow now try and imp impose or trying to you know push people to retroactively install these ventilation systems is just asinine and again where does it end do you put the money in clubs do they go in cinemas do they go in theaters uh do they go in bars and pubs like what more like you want to always and again it's, it's better is i don't get me wrong if you had to choose between you know trying to implement the covid passports and the ventilations of course i'd go with the ventilations all day long but how much more are they requesting for people to do when they've been out of work and unable to make money and support themselves for 15 months and now you're asking them to put together ventilation systems like guess what making places safer you know we could do things like that um i think certainly keeping masks um in indoor public spaces is a good idea as well isn't the underlying point that it's quite likely that we will all be exposed to covid at some point and we've just got to get used to the idea um well it may brain fart she can't even figure that doesn't even comprehend in her head mm -mm, that, but... that may be the case but why can't we all be exposed to COVID after everyone's been offered two doses of vaccine? You know, I don't understand why suddenly just because half the population is being vaccinated, then everyone else can just just risk getting COVID. I mean, we have safe and effective vaccines. We know they work. We know they're massively effective at preventing hospitalization and death. So why don't we offer that protection to everybody instead of deciding that it's over halfway through? That's what I that's what I find hard to understand. I find it hard to understand why anybody would be pushing for more restrictions or more delays in terms of returning back to life after all this time. I really don't understand it. Like, I, I just don't get it. I guess it's be I guess it's okay when you're like, you know, again, you're a scientist, you got, a, you know, you're a scientist from a government body. So I'd assume your salary is pretty substantial. You've probably got a couple of accreditations on your name. You probably published a few papers. You're fairly educated, right? It's easy to kind of speak from that point of view. But when you're somebody that's just kind of, you know, it, it, hurt, it hurts to say this, it's rude to say, but most people in the world are just existing, right? You just kind of wake up and you just exist in the world and you make the best of what you have. But there is no real, uh, you know, lofty ambitions for you and what you want to do, which is fine. No problem with it. Everyone has to play their role in this life. Not everybody can be flipping Alan Sugar. But part of existing and part of enjoying your everyday life is having the ability to go to the cinema, go to a club, go to an art gallery, hang out with your friends here, go to a restaurant there. Just be a, a, a able to move around the city or the town or the place that you live with no restrictions that is what gives your life some kind of meaning and purpose and without it you have basically rendered yourself null and void and obviously again forget even the element of like not being able to support your family because imagine a lot of people even if they have been able to claim some sort of benefits and stuff the wide majority of people the far majority of people i know anyway particularly would much rather be able to work a shitty job getting paid crappy amounts of money but actually be able to kind of earn the money through the sweat of their own brow as opposed to just sitting at home collecting dull money right and they don't have the possibility to do so because people in these kind of you know middle class type people for the most part are there telling you pointing fingers and telling you that you must wear a mask everywhere you go we can't go outdoors until everybody's been offered a vaccination it's just like most people don't have that luxury of waiting they just don't because they they don't even know how long they're going to be alive for like not to be macabre but most people for sure like i said with the festivals and parties i'd imagine we lost a greater number of people 
the first, what, that July 22nd when things were going to be reopened up on Freedom Day, it wouldn't surprise me if people told me there's a few people that self-expired after that day because they didn't give themselves in life any purpose. Like, I know in, like, what was it? But just before Christmas, I remember it happening. There was quite a few promoters around the country, maybe about three or that was associated with, like, you know, um, club nights or associated with, like, local, you know, dance music scenes who unfortunately self-expired. And, you know, no real reason was given, but you can read between the lines that either this person already had mental health issues anyway to begin with. And from some point, you know, and for to some extent, the ability to go out and just communicate with random strangers outdoors every day, it kind of just helped to somehow quell or somehow dampen whatever um, that illness was and then without it it kind of didn't festered and grew over time or just some people just would just generally down the dumps were not able to able to do the thing that they know and love you know every other weekend so to have these people tell us that hey you shouldn't be doing this, should be doing that it's just it's so detached from actual reality of most people and again forget the club just just in terms of moving around the city you want to be able to do that and you know um I can't think of anything worse than having more delays. I really can't think of anything worse. Like even the deaths and the cases doesn't weigh up to the inability to be able to kind of move around and do the things that you want. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But again, maybe I'm in the wrong, maybe in the minority. Again, like I said, this video was the one that got me blocked from Secret DJ, which again, I think is quite pathetic considering that I'm a fan of the stuff he does. I like his books and stuff and fairly like, you know, I'm fairly a fan of his content, but you know, I think COVID and stuff has really brought the worst in people. I think some people just been incapable of understanding or accepting other people have different points of view when it comes to how we reopen the world it's not right it's not wrong it just is what it is you're able to you know articulate if you're able to articulate yourself explain yourself any way you want then it is what it is or you know i just don't know i don't know people have their way of doing things and i guess and if he's pissed off he's pissed off it is what it is but what can you do you move on